Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Thursday, October 20th, 5.50 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a correction, still in a correction, very much in a correction. Uh, still leaders holding up okay. Only two leaders from last week's 21 over 21 list have come off of uh, or broken the 21 day exponential moving average. So leaders still holding up okay. Uh, and that's one of the glimmers of hope uh, that is keeping me from being completely uh, bearish on the market. Now, the, the action of the indexes themselves is very much not bullish. Uh, you can see we have here all five of the major moving averages. Well, four of the five are trending below their 21 day exponential moving average. The Dow is above. Uh, we had four out of five two days ago. We're down to one out of five today. So that's a negative. Uh, continuing on, we've got the uh, medium term 50 day moving average and the long term 200 day moving average. All five of the indexes are below that. I want to note that the long term 200 day moving average is now 8% off of its high from when it rolled over in April. That means uh, we can we use the, the 200 day moving average as a re entry uh, part of our process, and that means that that portion of the portfolio will be getting in 8% below where the uh, 200 day was at the at its peak so that was one of the things that i discovered when i went through uh the 13 bear market statistics is that uh the number of times it rolls over and allows you to get back in easier if you use that ultra simple exit on a weekly close below the 200 and re-enter on a weekly close above the 200 uh is that frequently you get in uh much lower than where you were able to exit so a uh, little bit of an aside there. So what happened today? Indexes failed again at the 21-day exponential moving average battleground. Uh, absolutely a bull trap laid this morning. We'll talk about it when we go into the charts. But in addition to the leaders acting better, I do have uh, three little pieces of good information that offset the red that is being shown here. So the G6 down 0.88 percent, S&P 500 down 0.8 percent, NASDAQ 100 down a half percent, Dow down a third, mid caps down 1.5, Russell down 1.2, global diversified 60-40, stock bond down 0.51 percent, in-house protection down 0.56 percent. So we waited a little bit more, waited, W-A-D-E-D, -E a little bit more into the market when we broke above the 21 day this morning in the S&P 500 and it reversed by the close. We ended up uh, unraveling uh, some of that exposure. We also uh, did a couple more trades that we'll detail when we go through the tail of the tape. So first of all, let me explain what we do, why we do here at Revere, and it really comes down to this chart here. Uh, I was talking, um, where is my chart? Here it is. Ain't she a beauty, folks? So this is why we have risk management as our number one job here at Revere to avoid having people that have saved their entire lives approach retirement, get hit with a bad sequence of returns. Sequence of returns is the yearly return of the S&P 500. Uh, it returns uh, approximately 8% annually, but you don't just automatically get 8% every year. It varies widely what the annual returns are. And if you get hit with a big negative sequence right before retirement and you don't have corrective action taken, uh, your nest egg can get destroyed along with your retirement plan. So uh, we take it upon ourselves to protect the downside. The upside will take care of itself when the bull returns. We've got rules for exiting, rules for entering. But this is the chart. These are some pretty severe stats if you look at them. Uh, I mean, lots of people over this uh, time period have gone into retirement and gotten hit. I know some of them personally. Uh, and I've talked to quite a few of them. And um, after my father-in-law got destroyed in uh, when the tech bubble burst, uh, and then I decided I was going to have a career in uh, finance when I got out of IT, my goal was to 
become part of or start an advisor that would protect the downside for clients because I firm, firmly believe that the rules that William O'Neill laid in place for tracking stocks and markets and when it's healthy to be in and out, I believe that could be applied to um, managing people's retirement accounts. And here we are at Revere doing it and uh, growing quickly, more and more people coming on board because it's a common sense approach. Uh, protect the downside. What other part of your life when things are going bad do you, do you not take corrective action? So we think it's kind of common sense. So what we do is we participate in the market when the indexes and leading stocks are above the short term 21 day exponential moving average. That's the green line. Medium term 50 day moving average. That's the red line. And the big bad black line, the 200 day moving average. When the market is trending higher above all those, uh, we're as long as we comfortably can be. If things start to sell off and go lower, we'll get some of our stops hit. Sometimes it's just a temporary dip and there'll be more opportunities to get back into the market. And sometimes it gets worse and it rolls over. And that's what you saw here at the beginning uh, to the middle of January. The slopes of the lines roll over. This is telling us uh, things aren't good. Pay attention. This was just about the time the Fed started talking very hawkish about the rest of the year, scared the markets. They broke below the 200 day moving average. This is when we really got defensive, a couple of bounces back above it, but then things all changed in April with a big failure to get back above. The slope of the line rolled over and there was a big second leg down uh, in the markets. That was followed by a rally that failed into the downtrending 200 day moving average and then the third leg lower. Now. One of the reasons why I'm not as uh, bearish as I would be just purely looking at the fact that we're under all the moving averages was this big shakeout bar here. Uh, I don't know if this is the bottom for this recovery, but bottoms are very frequently put in by the beginning of bear market rallies. And this was a massive shakeout uh, that broke below support and a lot of buying went in, came in and it happened on bad news. Uh, by all rights, the market shouldn't have recovered the way it did, but it did. So that makes this area here, this 3560, 3570 area, a big area to hold if we continue to pull back. And we're really not that far from it, so we're willing to give the market a little bit of leeway. Uh, plus, we we had a big shakeout attempt on 1014, uh, big negative reversal, and the market just shook it off the next session, gapped up. Uh, up for a second day, now two days of a pullback on lower volume. We're right back to where we were uh, at the end of business on Monday, basically. Uh, so really, and if you take a look at a 60-minute chart here, this looks like uh, this big move up and then this pullback. The pullback's on the gentle side relative to pullbacks over the last three days, and you could argue that it's just a bull flag, uh, a bull flag being after a bullish run up, you pause for a little while before continuing higher. Uh, to me, that's what that looks like uh, is a bull flag after the move up. So that's the second reason uh, that I'm bullish. The third reason is that this area here very much to me resembles this area here where we shook out, went higher, failed at the 21 the first time, came down, failed at the 21 again, but we never broke below this prior low here that set the low, uh, the this support area before we had this two day shakeout. So I consider this area here very similar to this area here. So we had this last shakeout on 714 uh, and then we had a double digit gain off of the bottom into the 200 day moving average. Um, this bull flag is set up, <clears throat> excuse me, is set up to have a similar move. Uh, and if it doesn't, let's just say that the risk to reward is skewed to the upside because we know our stops are right here, uh, just about another 100 points below or less than 3% uh, below where we are right now. So uh, that's another uh, reason to be bullish. Uh, a third reason is the VIX today. On a red day like today, the VIX uh, should have went higher. It didn't. It came down and it broke below the 21-day exponential moving average for the first time since all the way back here in on uh, September 9th. Uh, the VIX, uh, and also notice that the stochastic is trending lower and has plenty of room to go lower. 
Uh, this will change if tomorrow, it also had a close below 30, well actually at 30.15, I wanted to close below 30 and actually uh, it was at 29.99 and now at 30.05 after hours, but uh, a, lo a, a lower low on this will be very bullish for stocks. If we break back below or back above the 21 day exponential moving average, it'll just be a one day shakeout and that'll be bearish for stocks. And then I wouldn't be surprised that we go lower and test uh, that breakout range. So that's uh, the third reason uh, why I'm uh, not quite, let, let's just say that there's uh, some reason for optimism. Here's the fourth reason. This is a chart put out by All Star Charts, JC Parrots. If you uh, follow him on Twitter, he puts out a lot of good stuff. Uh, get on the email list if you're not already on it. But here's a chart showing I'll just read what he said. If there was real stress in the credit markets, you would see credit spreads widening. This chart, we're looking at lower lows in the S&P, but higher lows in the ratio between junk bonds and treasury bonds, and that's very clear. We know that treasury bonds are streaming higher uh, in in their yield uh, as price comes down, but they uh, junk bonds are not doing as bad and junk bonds are a reflection of the overall market and the overall business cycle so this is a very positive divergence uh relative to the s p 500 on the ratio of junk bonds to treasury bonds so that's that's the fourth reason uh why i think that there's really n four reasons not to be just an overly flat out bearish uh have a bearish outlook on the markets right now. So the bull flag setup, VIX below the 21, leaders outperforming the indexes, and um, the junk spread. And add to it, I guess you could technically say there's five if you consider this setup here, uh, putting in the low similar to this setup here when the low was put in, in the beginning of June. So let's say there's five reasons uh, why I'm not an outright uh, outright bear. All right, enough talking there. Um, on to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, tried to get above the 21 today. Failed right at it again. Didn't make a lower low, though, while the S&P did in this uh, tight four-day range that's being put in. So a little bit of positive divergence on tech stocks. This despite the fact that Twitter uh, was down 6 or not Twitter, Tesla down 6.7% today. Uh, on its reaction to earnings, but semiconductors and software picked up the slack and uh, kept the NASDAQ 100 elevated somewhat. Here's the Dow Jones Industrial Average, by far the best looking of the big cap charts. Uh, one, two, three, four closes above the 21 day exponential moving average now. In fact, the ADMA is going to curl up through the 21. Lots of uh, relative strength in the Dow. Of course, we would prefer the Dow to be weaker because a stronger Dow normally means that the more growthy uh, pieces of the market are uh, not faring as well. And that, that is the case if you look at mid caps and small caps, which had been outperforming, uh, now underperforming for the last six sessions with a break below the 21 day exponential moving average on mid caps and also the inability to stay above the 21 day exponential moving average in small caps. So let's get to the tail of the tape and uh, we'll discuss the changes. So technical, I had this as green yesterday, but with the G6, mid caps and small caps failing on their stochastic hookup, that's gotta go to medium to red. Uh, put call at 1.05, the VIX, uh, at four o'clock was 29.98. It's now 30.05. I think this trades after hours, and that's why. Uh, but still down 2.5% um, on the day and below the 21 for the first time. That's why those are highlighted in green. Also, the fear and greed. This is not a pure sentiment indicator, but up six today on um, a down day in the market. Uh, there are seven components to this. I haven't dissected it, uh, but I know that sentiment is only one of the seven. So the rest of them are tied to internals of the market, uh, but up six on a red day in the market. So let's call this number six for uh, reasons not to be a complete bear. Um, now, granted, uh, the bull case reclaim of the 21, that pretty much has ended. So we're still sticking with the bear case for now. Still a ban our stops, of course. 
<clears throat> that's that's a given. We we don't compromise on that. So from the news, Fed speakers continued with their hawkish tone today, saying that they don't see uh, the uh, inflation being slowed by the interest rate rises, and they're going to continue to have to do it. Day count went from one day down to two days down. Expectation coming into today was neutral. Uh, flip that to negative from the perspective of a failure below the 21-day exponential, and we broke below the support resistance level. This is a big one here at 3715 to 3730, uh, and a failure at R1 here, this 275 to 277. Uh, strong four-hour trend down intraday today didn't do anything to help, but again, it was mostly on the indexes, uh, leading stocks holding up better than the overall indexes. Uh, leaders today, oils, semiconductors, software, gold stocks, XLE and OIH, uh, two components of oil stocks, and uh, marijuana stocks strong again, a comeback after having that big gap up last week and then fading for four or five days. Bonds were lower, uh, all-time highs on the 10-year and uh, the 30-year, not good there. Uh, KBE banks, utilities really got hammered. These are supposedly defensive sectors, but they didn't hold up today. Transports and uh, home builders also hammered. So focus, these are the charts that we're going to go through in a minute. But let's talk about what we did uh, in-house today, but first I have to go through the things other than the indexes that uh, we're supposed to take a look at. Here's gold, again, making a lower low. Uh, here's the TLT, the long-term bond, making a lower low. Here's the TNX, the 10-year yield. This is a higher high, meaning rates are making all-time highs. And this is accelerating away from the uh, 8 EMA. Every time it accelerates away from it, usually it takes a break. I'm not calling for a break. I'm just noting uh, that that's the, historically the uh, action. Uh, let's see, Bitcoin, BITO, really didn't do anything down a percent today. Uh, and I already showed the VIX. So uh, those are the big uh, other ones to discuss. So bottom line, another negative reversal and a failure at the 21-day exponential moving average. So what did we buy in-house today? Uh, energy was strong out of the gate. It faded, but still finished positive. Uh, this is a two times broad ETF, not as... Uh, concentrated as NRGU, which is a three times and really just moves extremely fast, almost scary fast. But 1%, this is a two times uh, energy ETF. Uh, try to break out today, pulled back, still closed, positive, uh, good risk reward here, but uh, a small starter position in that. Then the other, and this was another reason to be uh, bullish this morning, AEHR, which is to me the premier can slim stock right now, was having a very strong third day up. But what happens to stocks in a bear market? Uh, Whack-a-mole, it stuck, po poked its head above and got smacked back down. When it broke below the pivot, uh, we took a 1% position uh, in that to get started. Very volatile stock, uh, keeping it small for now. And then when we broke out today above the 21, we bought 5% UPRO. Uh, but then when we broke below, we sold two thirds of our VTI, basically undoing that and then a little bit more to make up for the added beta that we added here. And we also added uh, another 10% in T-bills yielding about 3% for some of the idle cash. Uh, so basically the, the adjusted beta that we came into the day with was the same as we went out with after these changes at basically a third uh, of the S&P 500. As I said, bottom line, another negative reversal and failure at the 21. So let's take a look at the focus tickers uh, to see how uh, they fared today. So AEHR is one of them. I talked about uh, two days up. Third day up was strong, and then it had a reversal when the market reversed. Uh, Tesla, one we want to keep an eye on to see if it holds the bottom of this gap down day and this 200 area. Tesla, very important to the market. Uh, volume heavy today. Um, they missed sales. I don't, Elon said he was done selling. Volume wasn't really off the charts today at 72% above average, but uh, we got to keep an eye on how this acts as it certainly impacts the overall market and the tech sector. Uh, Tesla, and we want to see how Netflix is doing today. Now, what I'd like for Netflix to do is to do what Chipotle did after its last earnings report. So you see the gap up. Inside day after the gap up is okay. Wouldn't be surprised due to the fact that the market was down today, that it didn't make a higher high, and it's got a lot of resistance here. But... Uh, 
if I had my druthers, here's Chipotle at its last earnings report. It was floundering under the 200-day moving average. Good reaction to earnings. Next day made a higher high, but look at the market was trending higher at the time. Uh, so if the market writes itself, we want to look for Netflix to do a Chipotle and get above the 200-day moving average. Uh, HLIT, no addition to this today. Still a 2% size, but finished positive on the day still. I, I consider this the number two Canslim stock only because uh, it's not, it's, let's say it's number one from an ease to get in and out of uh, and, and limited volatility and AEHR from a pure Canslim perspective with the big growth numbers uh, we'll, and, the, and the, big, uh, the big N with uh, Silicon Carbide, let's say that these are 1A and 1B. So, but it's another one we're definitely keeping our eye on. So another one that attempted the breakout back uh, when the follow through day, we were wondering if we're gonna have it, but we didn't have it. But this is still holding strong, Booz Allen Hamilton uh, around this 100 area, uh, inside day yesterday, higher close today. They do have earnings in eight days though, but still keeping an eye on it. Deckers, a retail play acting well uh, here, but had a negative reversal today, uh, down 2%, broke below the low of that gap up day. So that kind of undid uh, all of the benefits there. Uh, but again, we've got uh, earnings next week. So a negative there, a positive on SMCI, they up their numbers. Uh, they have earnings coming up in a couple of weeks. And this was one that acted great leading into its last earnings report and then streaming higher in price after its earnings report before uh, the market started to sell off and it got caught up in that broke below the 50 day. Now forming a flat base with this big gap up today, big volume. I want to get it on the radar to keep an eye on it. Uh, average 616 on a $61 stock, so about $36 million. We're having discussions in-house on uh, mathematically how we're going to handle playing some of these smaller stocks that do have the N, show the fundamentals, and uh, really need to be owned, even though they're not as liquid as we would like. And of course, we're going to have to take smaller sizes on it, but it's better than not participating at all. We know the history of how stocks like this act. They will grow into liquid leaders if they continue, and if we get in uh, at a good cost basis and let them mature, uh, everything will be fine as long as we protect our cost basis. So SMCI and then uh, oils, we've gone through that. Oils had a mixed day today. Schlumberger has earnings tomorrow. Very curious on how that is going to end up because this is very clearly one of the leading oil stocks as oil services has outperformed the producers lately. Uh, Schlumberger and then let's see how the four um, aerospace stocks did. General Dynamics, Kind of an inside day down 0.81%. Uh, LHX is number two. Uh, da uh, positive on the day, above the 200 day moving average, relative strength at a new high. Uh, Northrop Grumman, NOC, also positive inside day today. And the one that kicked it all off with their uh, earnings report, Lockheed Martin, third positive close since earnings with relative strength at a new high. So those are the focus stocks. Uh, and then, of course, indexes and the dollar against the 21 we're keeping an eye on. But uh, so Decker's kind of undid uh, what it uh, the good news from two days ago. The other one's holding up pretty well. We want to see Netflix get above the 200 day moving average and Tesla not to break below today's low. And then absolutely, we've got the big techs reporting next week. Apple needs to get above its 21 day uh, exponential moving average lighter volume on the pullback today, but another failure to get above the 21. So that's going to wrap it. As always, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, you can email me, Don at RevereAsset.com. You can also reach out uh, at Dan at RevereAsset.com. Dan Stewart is the Revere's president. He's a CFA, the king of all things financial, Mr. A to Z, as I like to call him. Uh, or you can phone 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. So remember, don't get bit by this chart. You do not have to be at the mercy of the markets. It's never too late to sell if you have a plan to get back in. We've got rules to get us in. We've got rules to get us out. Uh, we've proven the numbers that we've put up uh, and the system that we have uh, works to protect the downside and participate in the upside. So wrapping up Thursday, October 20th, 
Remember folks, it's not how much you make in the market, it's how much you can keep. Thanks for listening and have a great day.